Welcome everybody to our daily walk in wisdom where we are entering into uncharted territory, the book of Ecclesiastes. For some of you already, you are finding it a challenge and we haven't even started reading any of the verses. Today, we begin in chapter one and verse one. And it says, meaningless, meaningless, says the teacher. Sorry, that's Ecclesiastes 1 and verse 2. Meaningless, meaningless, says the teacher. The framework for Ecclesiastes is to do with a different kind of wisdom to that which we have grown accustomed to in the Psalms. So where the Psalms would have us feeling kind of uh, uh, a desire to worship, an uplifting desire to worship, because that's what the Psalms are designed to do. Ecclesiastes is designed to make us think, so we have to engage our gray matter. When it says meaningless, meaningless, says the teacher, the teacher is what I want to focus on today. Do not presume that your thoughts about life are right. Have you ever wondered where your thoughts came from? Your thoughts come from somewhere. Notice the phrase says the teacher. Who's your teacher? Why do you believe what you believe? You are more the product of others' thoughts than you would dare admit. The philosophers of history, Aristotle and Plato and Nietzsche and Kant and Hume and Socrates, they have imposed their thoughts upon today's society. There's a reason why people think the way they think, why you think the way you think and what you think. Pastors and mentors and friends and colleagues and parents and big tech and big media and movies and celebrities all contribute and shape the way that we think, the thoughts that run through our mind, that orchestrate what you think about yourself and the world around you. They've gotten you to do things without you even realizing that you're doing it. You've bought things that you didn't even really need. Uh, behind the fashionistas of society, the ideologues and powers rule, political and financial and religious and irreligious, have motives and agendas to push and mold the world in certain directions. And these influences have shaped culture and they seek to provide you with your sense of meaning. And they seek to provide you with a meaning of life. And they're attempting to define you, to define life for you, because if they can define your life and the life around you, then they can define you. And that makes you an easy prey for their marketing and manipulation. It's not so much that people have ideas, but that ideas have a hold of people. And you should know what ideas have got a hold of you, otherwise you will not have a clue where they will end up taking you. So beware, do not make the mistake of believing the thoughts of others are your own. Nobody's thoughts are your own until you have owned them. How are you going so far? God will challenge your stinking thinking in an attempt to get you to think right. Because if you can think right, then you will be right. And if you can be right, you will do right. An authentic life doesn't come without a struggle in this arena. All of us have a tendency to misrepresent ourselves, 
to pretend that we're smarter than we are, or better than we are, or holier than we are. Everyone has perjured themselves at least once in an attempt to maintain their good reputation. And every time we do that, every time we pretend in some way, we're building our lives upon false foundations and a loose authenticity. And the end result is a sense of meaninglessness about life in general and ourselves in particular, because we're proclaiming and propagating and propagandizing a lie. If you want to build integrity, whenever you catch yourself thinking or saying something that isn't truly your own belief, your conscience will recognize it, your conscience will alert you to it, you'll feel uncomfortable within yourself. That's your internal incongruence that you're feeling, your internal fracturing, the fracturing of your personality. You'll feel it like something dark or heavy or draining. It'll make you feel weaker, less of a person. The moment you notice that that's taking place within you, you've got to stop. Stop thinking that thought. Stop saying those words. Stop that conversation right there and then. And then what you need to do is you need to find something that you truly believe. Something that you really believe is true, true for you. And then that is the thing that you want to bring into the conversation. That is the thing that you want to think about and take to its ultimate end and find out what you truly believe, what you really do know, because that will be far more interesting and more authentic concerning yourself than any thought that somebody else has had that you're just repeating because you thought it sounded nice. Say what you truly believe or say nothing at all. So that means you need to find out the things that are worth truly believing. You need to find the building blocks of your thought life and bring into your mind thoughts and words and ideas and concepts and principles that will help you become the person God has predetermined you to be. So Jesus said, if anybody who hears these, these words of mine puts them into practice, then he's like a wise man. That's what we're talking about in these messages, about becoming wise, like a wise man who built his house upon a rock. So if you determine to live according to the sayings of Jesus, then your life will gain meaning and integrity. But the person who lives according to any other rules or thoughts or ideology, no matter how popular or clever they sound, Ultimately, they have no solid ground upon which to stand. So when it says in Ecclesiastes, the teacher, the real teacher is Jesus. It's, he is the real teacher. So he's the one whose shoulders we should ultimately be standing upon. And the wise words that I want you to take away from today's short devotion is the wise man builds his house upon the rock. God bless you, and we'll see you again tomorrow for some more wisdom, some more things to work upon our thinking from the book of Ecclesiastes. God bless you.